Today I'll be demonstrating trach cares or tracheostomy cares. The supplies that you'll need for the skill. You'll need your tracheostomy clean and suction tray kit. You'll need your suction catheter kit. I always bring an extra sterile, pair of sterile gloves and you'll need saline. Sterile saline. You're going to need um, bring all those supplies with you. you go ahead and get them on your table. It's clean, dry, wash your hands. Introduce yourself and perform aid it to your patient. So Mr. Smith, my name is Erin. I'm going to be your nursing student today. Today I'm going to be performing um, trach cures. So we're just going to suction your trach, clean the inner cannula, and go ahead and put it back. So I'm, what I'm going to need you to do is I'm just going to lift the bed up to waist height. This procedure takes about 20 minutes or 30 minutes or so. If at any time you need to stop or take a break, feel like you can't catch your breath or anything, please go ahead and raise your left hand and we'll go from there. Now patients with trachs typically, um, if they're new, can't speak quite yet unless they have the passing mirror valve, which Mr. Smith does not. So Mr. Smith will need to just, you'll have to ask yes or no questions. Get you loose a bit. You'll need your patient to sit in a semi fowlers or high fowlers position, and you'll need to drop your bed rail down. You'll need your suction tubing, and you need an ambu bag as well. So when I'm done setting my patient up, I'm going to leave my bed rails up, and I'm going to get my supplies, get them hooked up. You will need a partner for this, um, so they can bag your patient intermittently while you're getting everything ready, so that you can stay sterile. You may also would like, um, may want to get a linen saver or a chuck. You can put that drape over your patient's chest. You'll need goggles as well as a face mask. As sometimes patients with trachs can get mucus plugs and they can shoot them great distances. So just to protect yourself from bodily fluids. Turn your suction to continuous and turn it to high. Make sure your suction's working. Sorry, Mr. Smith, just gonna reach around you and get your tubing positioned so that you're ready to go. You may also wanna do a quick respiratory assessment. So listen to their front. And see how their lungs sound. I don't like to have my stethoscope on me while I perform the scale, so I'm going to tuck it off to the side. I've taken my rings, my watches off, everything, as this is a sterile procedure. I'm going to go ahead and drop my bed rail. While I do trach suctioning, I have my patient hooked up to the monitor so I can watch their, um, their oxygen sats at all times. If they start to drop or anything, it could be a respiratory emergency, we would need to make sure um, we Keep begging them until their sats come up and let the physician know. Also, with trachs, you need to know where their obturator is at all times. An obturator is a little plastic device that should be taped to the head of the bed, or it can be taped to your cabinet. But it looks like this. All it does is if they cough their trach out, especially if it's new, even if it's older, you guide it back down with the obturator, hold it in place, take this out, and then you need to call for help as this is a respiratory emergency. If they lose that airway, especially if it's new, um, they won't be able to breathe and they may end up coding. So you need to make sure you know where this is at all times, just in case there is that emergency. So, so I've got my, my sterile saline, got my suction, my tray, and my gloves. I'm gonna go ahead and get everything ready. So this is a clean, to a sterile procedure, so wash my hands, get my gloves on. I'm going to make sure I get everything cleaned up, ready to go, my patient's ready to go. I've got my table ready, I'm sorry. We're gonna go ahead and open all of our packages. So I'm gonna open my tray, suction tray, away from me, and throw away. Remember you have your one inch borders, so I can touch along this side here. I like to make sure I have my packages opened in the way that I'm going to use them. 
Um, so I may be rearrange them shortly after I open all my packages, but I'm just going to go ahead and move down the line. It may be easier to open the paper side up and leave the plastic at the bottom as the plastic kind of creates a little bowl that holds all of your supplies in place so that you don't flop them out onto the side. I'm going to make sure before I had opened all of my, any of my packages that they were um, with the expiration, they weren't expired, that there weren't any holes or discoloration uh, marks on the packaging, um, and that it was a correct product before I opened it. I need to put on my gloves before I touch anything in my sterile kit. So starting with my dominant hand, put on your gloves, and then start, then glove your non-dominant hand. And then pinch in the middle and throw away. You have a drape in your kit that you will open. Shiny side to the table or shiny side down. And then I'm going to take my supplies out. This little cuppy is what you'll use to fill. Um, you'll fill it with saline when we're all ready to go. You can touch the whole container as it was in the sterile packaging. Um, now that it touched the table, I can only touch the top part of that package. So, or even the middle. So I can slide it around like this. I don't need the gloves or anything else in this kit, so I'm going to go ahead and get rid of that and make sure that I remain sterile. I can use the middle of my paper to slide my drape over as it is my sterile field, and I have that one inch border, so make sure you be cautious of where this edge is so that it does not touch you. And then as whatever hangs over the table is your new one inch border, so you cannot put anything on this edge. So I'm going to go ahead and set my catheter down. I have an extra pair of gloves, so you have two extra sets of gloves. I have Q-tips, I have a brush, I have my um, pipe cleaners, ties, I have a trach dressing, and I have my gauze. All right, so nothing is on my one inch border. I've got my packaging ready to go. I'm going to set it up in the way that I'm going to use it. All right, I'm going to then, this is my dominant hand which will remain sterile, this is my non-dominant hand which I will use to do non-sterile things. So remember that. I'm going to fill my containers with saline. It's leaking. I'm going to set it back to the side. Don't wipe your hands in pants, but this is my non-dominant hand that's sterile, not sterile anymore, so it'll be okay. I'm going to then, with my non-dominant hand, unlock the trach. So on your patients in the lab, they have a little loop. So all you're going to do is hold on to that loop, and I lied, you're going to leave the trach in place. There's two ways to do this, and on your paper, we're going to suction our patient first, and then go ahead and remove our, tra our trach. So this hand is still um, not sterile anymore. So everything looks good. I'm going to, my suction's on. I'm ready to go. I have my partner ready to go to um, give my patient two breaths. I'm going to then get my catheter positioned in my hand. Um, with everything, I don't like to have my patient's dressing, dirty dressing underneath while I'm doing everything clean. So I'm going to go ahead and remove that now. I'm going to assess the amount of drainage and the color and if it smells and then throw it in a biohazard container. All right, so I've got everything ready to go. So this red end is what I will connect to my suction. And then I can use my non-sterile hand to um, connect it together to make sure it's got a good, we're connected good and correctly. So I can, with my sterile hand, control everything 
the plastic tubing. This red part is no longer sterile, and that's what I will use to control suction with my thumb. I'm going to lubricate my catheter in the container, the little cup, and suck some um, water up. I'm going to then let my patient know on the count of three, I'm going to go down and suction. So on the one, two, three, I'm going to go right down the middle. You make sure this hand stays sterile. Don't touch the trach. Don't touch anything around the trach. Your patient, they're down. And you're going to go down 15 to 20 centimeters. And then you suction and twirl out. That should not happen. All right. While that's done, you're going to have, you're going to have to give your patient four breaths. So this is still sterile and everything. So my partner would give my patient two breaths while I'm lubricating the catheter, so it'd be breath one. After the first path, they're going to give you two breaths, so it'd be um, breaths two while I'm cleaning the catheter. When you suction your patient, you can go down a maximum of three times. So after they have given two breaths, which you will need to tell your instructor to do, um, give two breaths, they will give two breaths, you will suction and clean out your catheter. I'm going to go down for my second pass, shoot right for the middle, not touching anything extra, like your patient, and then suction out and spin out. Please give two breaths, so it would be breaths three. I'm going to clean my catheter and go down for the final, third and final pass. Right down the middle, 15 to 20, and twirl out. It is important to remember that when your thumb is up, suction is off. Thumbs down, suction is on. So you're going to give your patient a thumbs up going in, and you're going to take your thumb with you when you come back so that you remember. Have your patient or your partner give two breaths, and those will be your final breaths. We've done three passes, so I'm going to go ahead and just drop the catheter. I can drop it on my chuck, or I can drop it off to the side onto the floor, whatever you prefer. You don't need to go ahead and disconnect it or anything. It's just going to give you a higher risk of breaking sterile field. All right, so we've suctioned our patient. Sats are still stable. Patient is still doing okay. This hand is still sterile, and this hand is no longer st is still not sterile. I'm going to, with my non-sterile hand, unlock my or um, unlock my inner cannula, or use a little loopy like you have in the lab to take out the inner cannula. I'm going to then rest it onto the side of my container. The outside of your inner cannula is not sterile, so it's okay to put that on the outside one inch border to make sure that the sterile part stays sterile and the whole container stays sterile while the dirty part or the non-sterile part stays on the outside of our container. So I've, rest, I've put it into our solution with my sterile hand. I'm going to go ahead and get my pipe cleaner. I rest it in the solution. I'm going to go ahead and clean the inside. So I need to be careful that I don't insert the pipe cleaner too far, otherwise I could break sterile field by touching my, my self or even the outside part of the cannula. So just the inside part and throw away. Never put anything back on the sterile field. It'll all be broken. Sterile, everything will be broken. You'll have to start completely over. And then I'll clean out the inside again. Throw away. I'm going to use my little brush. I'm going to brush and clean the outside. Make sure everything looks good. This doesn't fit very well on the inside, so it's best to use your pipe cleaners on the inside and use this big brush on the outside. Also, this brush sticks to everything, so give it its own spot, or else it'll get stuck to your Q-tips and your gauze and your trach ties, and it'll be much harder to get pick up. So it's in the trash. I'm going to go ahead and rinse and tap the inside T, or the inside marker of my um, trach kit so that it's still sterile. Tap out all the extra fluid. It's clean. I'm going to then, with my non-sterile hand, lock it back in place. So you're going to start off to the side and bring it forward, unlock it in place until it clicks. I'm still washing my patient's stat, my patient's still doing okay. I'm going to then continue. I no longer need to be sterile since my inner cannula is locked in place and I've already completed my suctioning. So I'm going to take the other part of my container. I'm going to get my Q-tips wet. I'm going to support the trach, and I'm going to clean from the top out. So what I'm going to do is clean underneath the trach, so I'm going to split it into four. So I'm going to clean the top first so that the fluid can run down, and then I'm going to clean the bottom. So one swipe, clean, throw away, get it wet, clean the top, throw away, 
underneath, throw away, and then again underneath and throw away. You may have five Q-tips in there. There's just an extra one in case. Now I'm going to take my piece of gauze. I'm going to then also get that wet. I'm going to support the trait collar and clean one side, fold, and support the other side, wipe, and throw away. So whenever you are moving your trait collar or anything, you need to support the sides to make sure that it stays supported and stays in place, especially if it's fresh. If it's a brand new trait, it is, it is held in by sutures and they'll be very tender. So you need to make sure that you are very gentle when you're doing these trait cleaning underneath the face plate and doing your trait cares, as well as supporting this the whole time so it's not pulling on the sutures. If it's a well-established trait, just make sure that you are still gentle as not pulling on any scar tissue or their stoma of the trach as well. So now that I've cleaned the face plate and cleaned underneath, I'm going to then leave the second piece of gauze dry. I'm going to support the trach collar, clean underneath and clean the top, folding and using a new side of gauze every time. So clean underneath and clean um, dry on top and throw away. So everything has been cleaned and dried. Before I put my split gauze dressing underneath, I'm going to change my trach ties which you are not going to actually do, you're going to verbalize. So what you do when you change trait ties, you're going to have, a, your friend is going to hold one side, so they'll hold this side, and I'll start over here. I will thread this through and tie a knot, undo this set, pass it around, and then pass this around while I, my partner is still holding this side of their trach. I'm going to tie this side, I'm going to, while I'm doing that, assess the skin all the way around their neck to make sure there's no redness or skin breakdown or anything around the site. While you're doing a cleaning around the face plate and around the stoma itself, you also need to do a skin check there to make sure that there's no redness, there's no skin irritation, there's no breakdown, or anything along those lines that would compromise that stoma or that respiratory pathway. So now that we've changed our tick ties, I'm going to make sure there's one to two finger breaths underneath. I take, make sure I throw the old ones away into a biohazard container and everything is clean, dry. I'm going to then put my clean drape dressing underneath. So again, I'm going to have my partner hold one side of the face plate while I slip this under. And then I will, they will switch and hold the other side while I slip the, slip the other side under. And make sure. All right. Now I'm completely done. I need to make sure that, again, I listen to my patient's lungs to make sure that if there were any advantageous lung sounds that they have cleared. If not, then I would need to um, do a further respiratory assessment to figure out what else is going on and then make sure I would let my physician know. I need to make sure that I clean up all of my supplies, so move my suction tubing back to my paint my canister, as well as put my ambu bag back over by my oxygen um, source. I need to tuck my patient back in, take any linen savers or anything extra trash with me, Make sure that they're still doing okay, that their oxygen sats have still remained the same, or at least and above 90%. Make sure that there's nothing else that they need. Tuck them back in, put their bed rail back up, and lower the bed to the floor, and take all my supplies with me. And when I'm done, I need to go back to the chart and document how much suction, what I suctioned out, um, what it smelled like, and then I need to make sure I document like skin cares about cleaning the, st the stoma, that it was clean, dry, and intact, there wasn't any redness or anything, and what kind of drainage was around the stoma itself.